Okay. Good morning. Do you want to mute yourself when I'm speaking? It's going to help with them. Okay. Good morning, Pastor Double. We are excited you are here. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we trust that this session is going to be um, bless somebody. Uh, to everybody who's watching, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Uh, this is uh, telling their stories. We are telling the stories of African and African American missionaries. So uh, listen to the end and, and share this with someone. Trust that it's going to bless you. So Pastor Dabba, welcome. Would you introduce and tell us a little about yourself, please? Good morning, and thank you, Pastor Vermont team, for the privilege. My name is Augustine T. Dabba. I'm married to Jim Stella Gooding. We have about six children. Huh. I was married before to a winner that was in past in 2017. And that is a bitter memory that you can just escape, you know, but um, God has helped me. And I work for the Christian Missionary Foundation as a missionary. I was trained, if I was recruited uh, by the team in Liberia, uh, that the, the late Reverend Edith and Aunt George had started. And they sent me to CMF International School in Nigeria with my wife for training. We stayed there about two plus years and we returned to Liberia. We served as national director for Liberia for at least 15 years and we turned over that responsibility to new leadership. And, 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 but we still remain a uh, uh, missionary with CMF. Why it's true that we may not be in the place of leadership in terms of uh, at the hand of authority. Uh, but uh, that's ministry. Jesus remains the king, no matter whoever is the president. And so uh, we've been doing that kind of work for some time now. And uh, uh, along with that, we've been doing missions training, outreaches. We'll be doing a, a, a recruiting and supporting missionaries. And we'll be doing some real odd jobs, but it has brought us a, a real fulfillment in doing those things. Man, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Can you tell us a little about your call to ministry? Your call to missions, particularly. Well, it's going to be a call to ministry. Okay. Um, how do I begin it? Uh, I came to know the law or came to commit my life to Jesus. I threw an early age in, in high school, uh, probably in 11th grade at the Boko Washington Institute. But when I was in the third grade, I went to a uh, seven day Adventist school where I learned my initial Bible voices. I had initial contacts. Uh, I still remember that uh, famous passage uh, that, that, that uh, the first verse I remember was that uh, for unto us is born this day in the city of David, Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And uh, that passage, you know, has not left my heart. In fact, I think that was the beginning of my molding to becoming a Christian. Uh, then in the fourth grade, I, I ventured and got water baptized, even though not even understanding anything. And I still remember some friends asked me, do you know what you are putting your hands into? You got water bath. Do you understand it? Where well, I, I just went out for it. But it wasn't until 1987. Uh, 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 I mean, on the book of Washington, he said, ah, I'm going to be there in 1985. And I met a group of uh, a young men. I mean, older men than me, than I was. I mean, but young in the sense that we were students. They were doing ministry. They were, they, they were, Telling people to live for God, uh, a life of chastity. You can just live any kind of way. Uh, you can't even cheat during the exam because cheating the exam was almost like fornication, also. And I just couldn't grasp it. But when I saw their life on a daily basis, their lives were examples that I wanted to emulate. You know, I wanted to, when I stayed close to them, I was encouraged. I was, I felt happy. I felt relieved. When I went away from there, I felt emptiness. And so I wanted to be with them, but I was a soccer player. And they didn't want God to take my soccer plane from me because, you know, that was the only uh, social life I didn't want nobody messing around with, not even God. And and, and, and that was out my real struggle, you know. And and in 1987, after being on, I mean, on BDF uh, since 85, you know, because I got promoted to the 10th grade, I went back to the 9th grade. And then by the time I was, uh, I mean, I got in contact with the fellowship, but 85, 86, it was 87 when I finally 
I made a decision to commend my heart to the Lord, to accept my personal saving a lot, you know, and oh, it was overwhelming. And I went to the discipleship class. Then I had the privilege of learning how to fast for the first time. The first day I fasted was three days. And I can still remember praying that the, the, the last day would just end because I was crawling on my belly. I couldn't drink water. I mean, it was quite a, uh, uh, in, a challenging but different assisting situation to my body. But these guys, I would, for the for safety, I would just keep their name. Uh, Sunny, but they became living in pieces before me, living in pieces, and their lives challenged my life. And when I committed my life to the law in 1987, it was a, re a revival in December. How about December? No, first week or November last week, just before school uh, closed. The Lawana Christian Fellowship would hold up or something. And I committed my life to the law, and I started a new walk you know, of learning to live for God, to love him and to serve him. And after a, a, a long, long time, I mean, after that incident, I went for job training. I went for Simenko company. In fact, I was being paid. There were two of us, one Navin, Carter, and I. He was also from the fellowship. We were the uh, two students that got the first highest pay. We were being paid 250 uh, like Brenda, almost equal to 250 US dollars at the time. We were entitled to medical bills. I mean, we were entitled to uh, 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 transportation and, and, and bonus, all of the bonus and, and the rest of the thing. And so, but I was there doing electricity and all now I was thinking about, about my love for God, my, my service to God. And so, so by the time I came back to school in 1988, my final year I'd be there. Then I started thinking about, I mean, it is some God said you go to go to the Bible college. Mm -mm. God, you're not going to interrupt my plan. I'm not going to nothing called Bible college. I will study as an electrician, go to Tottenham College, become an electrical engineer. I will come back. I will work for Firestone. I will own my own car. Uh, I will support the church. You know, I mean, because the church doesn't have money. The kind of pastor I see around, and that pastor work I want to be able to do. So that was it. But then it is uh, it, it, when I got back uh, in, 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 in June after job training. It became a challenge, you know. All the dreams I was having was about ministry, or about stepping. Then I started to again realize that what people doing evangelistic ministry around the world, Nepta, they were dressing in a particular way, they would step out, conventional preaching. And I said, I'm called a ministry, but that's not the kind of ministry I'm called. I'm not called to that type of ministry, you know, the dressing ministry, the street preaching ministry. Yeah, I can preach in the street, but not the way they were doing it. So it, it, it really, really, really was a bit different. I mean, I mean, to me, so, but I didn't have any examples. There were, I've never met anything about a commissionary. I, I've seen the white people, you know, because uh, the traditional definition of missionaries at the time where you had to be white and you came from foreign country. I didn't even understand the context of what it meant to take the gospel to the unsafe, to the unrich, you know, to do it in a particular way, learn the culture, learn the language, and share the gospel and help them understand God in their own context. It was just uh, 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 challenging. So everything I was seeing around me were people who won't be pastor, you know, uh, people who won't be evangelists, people who are doing this, people who are doing that. And those were not the things that were interesting, in, you know, because it didn't, it didn't click to me. It was not until I came to town. And the first time I ever heard, I mean, the 1990 walking, God spared my life. In fact, uh, one of the things that made me know that God had come into a particular ministry in 1989, uh, I, I, I graduated from Peter. I think almost a year I didn't have, have working stuff. So 1989, we are uh, the, uh, the company in Nima in, in County called Kokopa. I uh, sent a letter to a uh, Buga Washington Institute to send an electrician. They needed another electrician to honor land from the other older electricians to help handle the responsibility. But I can tell you, my 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 foster my, my foster father was the administrative assistant. He said, "By God's this that you go for it." So I left. I packed my load and moved to Kokopa. I was entitled to seventy five dollars for a uh, uh, per month, a bag of rice, and a, 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 an apartment to stay in. You know, and I had three months probation. I was there 89. 89 was just before the war, mind you. And I was there 89. Uh, that was August, September. There was September, October, November. Three months. In December, I should have been employed. You will not believe it. At the end of the probation period, I received a letter. When I opened a letter, it says, you collect my pay. 
that the company will not hire me. Mind you, before this time, I have taken African Bible College exam, and uh, I first wasn't allowed to uh, get admitted because I had SDA background. But after African Bible College, will not uh, uh, admit people from Seventh Day Adventist background, you know, because of their uh, 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 view on what it meant uh, 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 on the Sabbath keeping. So, but when I got to Okado work, and it was quite uh, uh, sunny, I was sacked. Then the company used their car. They put me in a car, and the driver brought me to Kakata with all my uh, 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 belongings, and then I showed him someone, and he left me and left. It took me almost 10 years to know that that action by the company was God working in disguise to get my attention. Do you know what would have happened? Everybody who stayed in Kukupa in 1989, by the time the war broke out in uh, 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 December 24, 1989, all became commanders and leaders of the rebel front. But I wasn't there. I, I didn't have the opportunity to get involved in that kind of battle and the rest of the stuff. And so, but I was in, but it took me 10 years to realize God allowed him to sack me so that he would save me with the kind of temperament I got, the kind of attitude I got, save me from becoming there. Maybe I would have been a casualty. Because still, I know friends and family members who die as a result of the war. I mean, uh, 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 they were looking good. They were celebrated, but they got a, 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 a my handle because their friends got jealous of their educational capacity and they killed them. And so, 10 years before I realized that God had his hand in my dismissal from the Kugopa Robot Corporation. So, 1990, I stay here. Uh, 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 89, 90, 91, 92. But then I was involved with the, the Assembly of God Church. Some of the my, my, my senior brothers, one of their colleagues was starting, has started a church in Canada. So I worked with him and began Sunday school superintendent. I started teaching uh, Sunday school. And that's how I can, but then I kept realizing that I got a call to evangelistic Sunday, but not the normal type I see here. Not the type of evangelism I know people around, you know. They say evangelists, they say not in the church, they say evangelists, you know, you know, but they dress, you know, they got tech as evangelists, but they are not fruits of it, you know. I celebrated those powerful evangelists, the real bunking, and all this stuff, but I just realized God called me to something very different. It was not until, it was not until I met the Christian Missionary Foundation, uh, 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 when I moved to the Methodist Church, the ST Nambe Methodist Church, where the, the, the late Reverend at a judge of blessed memory, how worked. He came to Liberia and he was uh, uh, involved with Beta and Philadelphia churches. Then the Lord said to him, specifically, I remember him saying that, I want you to go here and help this pastor. And that was our senior pastor, the very uh, uh, Catway, Numenju Catway, J. Numenju Catway. And the Lord said to him, I want you to go here and, 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 and work with this man of God. That's what I brought you to Liberia for. And it was because his work that he raised up disciples, he raised up leaders. And I can tell you there are many churches that, that enjoy the services of the people Reverend Edda George invested in. When the, when the CMM International sent him to Liberia, I can still name uh, 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 Reverend Dr. Mohamed Sankor and, and Reverend Mona Sankor, who are two of his disciples. They are Philadelphia Church and leaders. Uh, Prince uh, 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 Thomas, a deacon of Philadelphia Church, uh, one of their leaders. I talk about uh, 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 um, Lucy Khan. And the list goes on. Last day, Matthews. So uh, last day, his son Matthew, one of the disciples, the Daniels. So several of them went to different churches. But last day, Matthew stayed at uh, 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 St. Nambi. And when I got to St. Nambi, I got it. I was doing ministry. You know, I got connected with St. Nambi as a result of the of the of the of the of the of the work that, that was being done at um, there. I was doing evangelistic efforts in Canada. So I moved to Moravia as a reader of one of my, uh, my colleagues, the Reverend Dr. James Labla. I stayed with him. So they were doing their church. I started going. So that's how I got connected. That again is another story because I want to, I wanted to leave ST Nambe. I wanted to go to a Pentecostal church. I was thriving. I was doing well. And then the Lord said to me, through one friend, he said, light shines better in darkness. And it was on the basis of that, 
that kept me at STNME. So I'm not troubled because people living uh, on uh, a Methodist church, a Baptist church, to go to different churches. I want to stay where I am and will be relevant and will impact my people. So when I encounter uh, uh, CML at uh, uh, STNME, I became a member. But that time, CML has partnership with, with a Methodist church and started an outreach program. Uh, interestingly, then I realized, yeah, this is the thing. I didn't know what the meaning was. I didn't know what the meaning of the kind of orange I wanted to be. But this is the thing. I want to be in missions. I want to be involved in missions. That was basically uh, how it all started. And after all time, Ryan Edda sent an invitation from CMM International and asked to send one person again to Nigeria for missions training. All of the people who seen on me will have been the people preferred. But none of them are willing to step out. So I ventured to go. 60 US dollars. Tell to pay my, 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 my trip to, to Nigeria by, by ship. Never been to Nigeria before. I venture on the road. In fact, by divine guidance. I was going to Festa that I never been to before. I thought Festa was like Stephen Tubber Estate. You know, you can just call the place and you can go to the place. I didn't know you needed from the port. You would take probably another two hours drive before you can get to the place you're talking about. And then when you get to the place, the place got a more than uh, uh, for, for the five acres of land that you got to be looking out for the place. So when I got to the place, there was somebody trying to take more there, but my spirit didn't uh, 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 encourage me because this person had taken uh, interest in me. They, they, they were attracted to me, but then I didn't sense that they had good intention. So, what I said, you don't worry, we're we'll taking you with us, you will go with us. By the time I came out, I saw this guy, I said, first time. I thought first time was one small community, like you call, uh, 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 maybe you say, uh, 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 Kolila, or one little town you call New Kakata. I entered the thing one low, I started realizing that. Then say, no, the place got no more. It got uh, uh, avenue no more. It got road no more. It got sunny no more. Then I got confused. Because I've never been to any country like that. No, no country that been so confused like that, like that. So I was in trouble. So I just pray, God, please help me. Then when I called Tony Terro, he said, oh, yeah, this is the place. Even though it was still far, but when I got on the Tony Terro, it was a military pick a truck that I got in. Can you imagine? It was a military truck that took me from the, from the port to that place. Then I finally... After walking around for several times, God guided me to the family that I was going to when the former librarians arrested, and I was so grateful. I went to CML training. That was, in, in fact, especially during the time when Abula won the elections and they said he didn't win. There was real chaos in Nigeria. As I stayed in Nigeria after the one month training, I stayed there almost three months. I couldn't get no plane was flying. You couldn't have gasoline to go anywhere. And that was another story. And, but that was where God helped to give me a clearer understanding of what mission was, what mission is, and what was my part into mission. And that was how I discovered that. And ever since, uh, that is the only thing that gave me fulfillment. I taught plenty of different, different things, you know. But if you get and see, find a sermon to pray, it's easy to find a mission sermon, an evangelistic sermon to preach, then to talk anything, because that's what gives me fulfillment. I didn't have a vision to say, Augustine, I'm God calling you. No. I didn't have people. I just felt in my heart the peace. This was the mm. thing that would give me fulfillment. You know, when people are running after prophetic utterance, I apostles, I mean, a, a, a prophet, in family, I just feel that I wanted to be relevant Amen. to God. I, I want to I let the thing that bread in God have bread in my heart. And that's how I felt I was called to mission. Ever since, even when I went to Moral Bible Training Center, I went to like talking missions. When I graduated and got to the seminary, I mean, they ask, what you, what you learn? You know, I was, I would tell my, my teacher about mission related course. I said, you can't teach, you can't course a seminary. Yeah. But not practical. You gotta be joking. You know, you know, like if you teach church planting, you gotta be practical. In fact, you gotta be practical from a mission context and not a theoretical course. You know, and one time I said, I, I told the teacher, I said, I was not talking to him. He came from Miami. I said, this book is very weak. My students, what, what, what you mean? I said, it's weak. It, it doesn't have the content. That tells that somebody needs to do church planting. And then suddenly the teacher bounced on me. Daba, what do you mean? I say, any course that is a practical course, but only a teacher's only theory yeah. is a weak course. From that day, that teacher myself became best friend. You know, he was senior. He loved me. He respected me for my boldness, but all because yeah. it was a training. Uh, 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 it gave that estimate of fun in me. 
Christian Missionary Foundation, Foundation developed in me, and I was willing to, to learn them. And it was not as easy as uh, people call easy, but I'm glad. And I was seeing this morning on the radio station, if you check 10 librarians, 20 librarians who are involved in missions, I got to yeah. be among the first 10. And I'm not begging for anybody to do that. I'm saying it because I know what how God has helped me and yes, mm. I, he has kept me. Wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Pastor. Well, there's just so much nugget and so much wisdom in what you've shared. I hope you guys are listening. Listen well, take notes because there's just so much wisdom. I'm going to go to the next question. I know you talked you talked about the radio that you were just on the radio program this morning. And and I believe that the radio program is it's a prophetic for, for me, I believe it's more of a prophetic a program to them to speak to issues of the nation, but also to call the church to missions. Tell us a little what what led you to start the radio program and how can people listen to that? And what's what's your vision for? Oh again, again, uh uh um I don't call Edward George my spiritual father because I don't have the right to call him my spiritual father because uh he didn't minister to me. I mean in terms of yeah. initial ministry in Liberia. The people he ministered to were our parents. Dr. Mohammed Sanko and his wife, uh, 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 Brother Lazia and his son Matthews. They were they were the ones who especially Lazia Matthew and wife yeah. who recruited us. So when they recruited us and they were training us, they didn't uh, Edda was in Iran. Edda had moved back to Nigeria. Then he moved to Central African Republic. You know, he was uh, he was visiting a time and time. But they were yeah. the ones who nurtured us. So I said to people, I am not a spiritual father. I'm a probably second or third generation to what uh, Edda George did in Liberia. So I, I do not come from his. I come yeah. from the extension of his lineage. So one or two of the trips he made to Liberia, and. When he came the first time, I was part, I started the church with a team in the display center, over 10,000 persons. And he went and saw that we made a stick and put plant on time to be a pulpit. And he was just amazed by everything we've done. Again, I never had any formal missions training at the time. I was doing them because oh, yeah. there was a spirit of grace from the work he has done in Labrador that rested on mm -hmm. us. And that's why we learned. So we did that. And so it was out of that, he wanted somebody to go to missions training. So one of these trips in the last uh, final years, you know, he came and said, I need to get you to be doing a radio program on mission. I want to specifically let me focus on missions. And what I'm going to do is I'll pay for one year. And the rest of the year, you will have to raise the money. I mean, I can tell you plainly, when he said that, we tried to find a radio station. Well, I, I found the Meredith radio station. I found the ERA radio station. He said, ERA has been around yeah. longer than Meredith radio station. So you would prefer investing the money in year there. He paid at the two thousand plus for a whole year. At the end of that time, because he told me. So we were doing program. Nobody was asking us for rent. Nobody was asking us for due until the, that year ended. The second year, uh, the school we run, we took mission support and, and supported the broadcast and took out some of the responsibility. When it came to play, we couldn't handle it. The people who are managing the radio station said we cannot broadcast any longer. They drop oh, wow. us off the radio. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so, so it took some time. By divine arrangement, one of the uh, female missionaries from EADW had listened to our broadcast before. And when they realized that I was on the broadcast again, said, Where is this guy that was doing the mission related program? And they said, When I said she was in charge of the radio station, I said, I don't have money. So she sent for me. We talked. She said, you know what? If you can sign a contract with us to agree to do the broadcast, even if you're traveling, do several broadcasts and keep them on and we can air them. But we will not pay you. I said, you say what? I said, if you pay for the broadcast, I got paid already. I need it all up pay. And you know, that was how come uh, 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 Debbie Sikra, the wife of the then medical director of the ERA Hospital, who was the manager of the radio broadcast, said, we will also help to see who can raise money to pay for the broadcast, you know, and that was how come we came back on the ERA radio station. And then I used my Methodist uh, 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 relationship and we got it started on the on the on the on the Methodist radio station. Right now, uh, uh for the last two years, we've been paying like, uh, a minimal oh, wow. amount of $30. You know, right now they are asking us to increase the money to $50 and tell that I was too small. I told them, say, I got money. 
He say, but if you get money, we'll call you. I say, well, you're calling, you're calling, you but I got money. And so that's where we are. But right now, looking around to see how far money to help support what is at here, the what is at uh, uh, the radio station. So because of that vision that Ed started, my responsibility as a second or third generation offspring is to ensure that I keep alive mm -hmm. the vision of mission that he labored and invested for. And so, so that whoever takes over from me, yeah. you know that it's a missions broadcast. Yeah, we talk about the life of the church. We talk about the health of the nation. But yet, like this morning, we we're talking about mm -hmm. how does the kingdom of God grow? You see Mark chapter 20, a full for 26 to 29, and you see the family uh, 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 a process to say, you need a sower, you need a seed, you need a saw, you need a season of growth, and you mm -hmm. also need a time of harvest. When we have that in perspective, then we're not we're not do church plenty mm. by migration. Yeah. We we'll do it by conversion. Wow, wow! Thank you so much, Pastor. Nova. So, if you are watching and you want to make sure this program is incredible, if you want to make sure that it continues the radius and programs, uh, we are going to have Pastor Nova's information in the description box below, uh, so you can connect there and you are able to send to him to support the radio programs. Thank you. So you are a missionary, and and not, I, I, for me, I believe you're not just a missionary. You are like a pastor to missionaries, and and maybe it's just me giving you that title because I've seen you function in that. Uh, tell us a little about the work you do um, uh, as a missionary and in, as you relate with pastors on the mission field or, or missionaries on the mission field. Oh, as a missionary, like I said. I have lived on the mission field. I have stayed on the mission field. I have been involved uh, in sleeping uh, uh, among the mosquitoes, crossing the dirty waters, in drinking waters that the missionary drink. I mean, stay where they are staying. You know, so I can go there anytime. In fact, I have one person can say, well, I don't have to tow yeah. any special mineral water behind me. Whatever you have there, we'll drink it. You know, except for the uh, last issue with the coronavirus and the challenges that have happened. So uh, uh, that's what I do. I stay with the missionary. Uh, we are involved in training with a lot of them. And one major thing we found out that we, we, we discovered that many of the missionaries on the field uh, have been required so much by their headquarter churches in Morovia. And nobody pays attention to their basic human needs. Some of them need uh, uh, just little support to take care of their children's school fees, take care of their feeding, take care of their housing arrangement. But guess what? Everybody wants the missionary to send financial mm. report on the tide or tide. And they send that mm. down and they don't support them. They never visit them. They never know the issues. Some of them have unexplained situation. But just stay with them. We, we, we make them feel. I, I remember I went to one of the mission field and I stayed in the very place they were sleeping. And and, and he said, we feel happy when you sleep in our bed. They yeah. You kind of won't go to the hotel. But mm. you stay and you yeah. eat what we eat. You know? Uh, uh, and, and that's the thing. So not just that, we are also involved in a, in, in a continuous praising ministry. We reach out to people in the uh, inmates. Inmates, uh, we do not just preach the gospel, uh, uh, but we also take care of their fed needs, clothing, food, and shelter. Just the other the Great Commission provided us some things that we took out to them. We are also involved in ghetto. Realize ghetto life mm -hmm. is connected yeah. with prison life. Criminal activities is in the ghetto, and then it's connected with prison life. And people get hooked on drugs, not because uh, that's why they didn't have any option. And somebody introduced them to something, um, yeah. and that thing got them hooked up. And so we are also in partnership with with with, with few rehab centers in Morovia, um, church based rehab centers. We go around begging for food stuff. We go around begging for things. We join the Reverend uh, 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 Michael Bowen. Which he holds a crusade here every now and then in Liberia. Every uh, at the week, uh, decoration uh, week, we have a three days crusade for for drug addicts and people involved in ghetto life, and just to minister the unchanging gospel to them. But while it's gone, there are people who want to leave drug. They are recruited from that football uh, competition and and evangelistic outreaches we hold, and they are mm. taken to the rehab center. One thing you will not believe when people are in rehab. They eat yeah. more than normal people from drugs. <laughs> eat more than normal human beings. Yeah. Uh, imagine you got eight men. They can eat Whoa. half peck of rest. Twenty five kilo in one day. They cook it in the morning after every by time finish. Their appetite is huge. And, 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 and you want to help them get off drug? Then 
there are some issues that need to be uh, yeah. paid to somebody that felt needs. So we do that. We we, we, we we raise support for the rehab centers, um, men rehab center, women rehab center. We, we raise support for the prison ministries. We to are involved, you know. When I go to the prison, I come out, I'm so exhausted. When I go to the rehab, it's even worse. I teach at a seminary. You know, a lot of time, the money they give you at a seminary, not even much money, it takes care of transportation. And we have to use some of the money to cook for people in the ghetto. We actually go carry medical things sometimes, like February we did. We take it to the ghetto, we feed them, take care of their health mm. issue, and present the gospel and give them the opportunity to, to say yes to Jesus Amen. and reject drugs. Again, leaving drugs yeah. is not an event, it's a process. You know, yeah. it will take maybe between 1,500, 2,000 yards to dollar uh, 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 if the person is willing to get one person off drug, mm. especially through the process of detox. When you are detoxing, yeah. you got to be feeding the person with real food. And all of those are, are the things. We are also involved in leadership training. Leadership training at different levels. Uh, we serve along the district superintendent of the Morrill District, the Reverend Dr. Julius Wazeki Williams. Right now, we are doing a lot of RLR training. You know, with every church, we put them in segment. Every other week, there is a, last week we had a training. Next week, we are going to have a training. Every now and then, it can be tiring, but you know what happened? If nobody there to give it, we have to give it so that we mm. set the church in the motion. And in that area, like the leadership training, yes. there, there are components of missions and evangelism that are highlighted. That insist in getting the church becoming a responsible church uh, and not just doing church work, but doing the yeah. very work that God called them to do. So there are different facets of things we are in. We go to the different counties, go to places. Sometimes there are calls for us to go. You can't go. We have a very small car. It can only go on rather motor roads. And we got to use motorcycle to some of the places. We look in the future when God can even change mm -hmm. the car. But that's what it is. You know, so right now, we are also teaching the, uh, the things we are doing in ministry at the Baptist Theological Seminary and at the Methodist Theological Seminary in Bangor. So due to two days at those seminaries, Amen. it's been challenging, but it's been worth it because there are a lot of the students who are re receiving messages that they will, I will never yeah. get to meet the people they are reaching out to. But God has provided that through the seminary to help teach mm. them cross-cultural missions and mission-related courses in discipleship, evangelism. Wow. Wow. Job. Thank you so much. That's that's incredible. So much work that is being done. My people, as you listen to this, don't just listen and like say, oh, this is good work. I want you to be able to connect and be a more connect and support and be partner to what is happening in Liberia. Uh, okay, so now let's let's switch gears a little. Tell us a little. What do you think about uh, the role of the local church in missions? The role of the local church in mission. The role of the local church in mission. Again, I mean, like I've always said, the local church is the actual custodian of missions. But over the period of time, the local church be, uh, 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 started to become lukewarm. They started to be very intellectual. They started to focus more in what and forgot mm -hmm. their primary responsibility. Like Liberia. Liberia was started to be a mission sending nation when Labra got started. That's why the founding fathers found a place for free slaves. So from here, the beacon of hope will spread out to the rest of Liberia and the rest of Africa. But guess what? When Labra found mm -hmm. safety in all the things they enjoy, they forgot the more concern about dress code, eating, titles, and, and popularity. And they've helped to, to let South Africa settle and many African nations come into being. But they forgot their responsibility. So all they've been doing is they've been opening the road for missionaries to come to Liberia to do the work. But the church in Liberia has not been doing it. So where do they tie you with the missionaries? Missionaries need to understand they came in because church neglected their role. Right now, the, uh, the church is getting aware. So the missions organization need to uh, serve as catalysts to get the churches aware and involved in mission. If the churches yeah. get involved in mission, then our work finish. Yeah. Because you know what? The church got the manpower. They got the resources. They got the places. They got the support. They got the connection. We missionaries got the technique. We got the style. But we got the people. Yeah. When one missionary will go to the church, we don't have to use forward now to get people yeah. from their churches to come to work for us. Let it be your partnership. There is a good partnership that I can still remember with the He's Alive Chapel in Nigeria and the Christian Missionary Foundation in Nigeria. Uh, 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 the Kanori people, the He's Alive Chapel raised the missionary 
who were canaries and one of the work and money canaries. They yeah. send them to CML, CML train them. CML found a place to deploy them. His alarm chapel provides the money for their upkeep. While the missionary are accountable to CML, they come to all the CML conferences, they report to CML, but they also are accountable to his alarm chapel. And time to time, these two organizations meet together yeah. to discuss the way forward. Even there was another group that joined them called Gospel Banker. Their role Amen. is to raise money for people doing missions in unreached places. Amen. So the church in Liberia needs mm -hmm. to see missionaries as partners. Missionaries need to see the church as partners and not rivals. You know, sometimes it's very disheartening when you see missions organizations uh, trying to buy more churches. When you find it is a church that Jesus said you obey, he didn't say you obey mission organization. Mission mm -hmm. organizations are offshoot of local churches. We cannot operate without the local church. We find expression in the local church. And if we find expression in the local church, then there has to be a lot of dialoguing, partnering, and networking to ensure that they, they both organizations yes. are not rivals, but they are members of the same team. And when we win souls together, God yes. gets the glory. He yeah, gets that's, the that's honor. just so, Yeah, that's, so, that's I mean, so profound be my because, like I said, yeah, all the human resources are in the local church. And all the financial resources even are in the local right. church. So what if the, the, the missionaries will come, will have the techniques and have the training, would partner with the local church and see, I'm imagining like how much the kingdom would advance right. and how fast we'll be able to. So what are some specific ways you think about missions organizations and uh, local churches can come into partnership? The place of mobilization and training. Mission churches got a, 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 a churches got the manpower, but they don't have the training. They need to accept that this mission organization have gone ahead. God has taken them from zero to the place they are presently, uh, and, and all of them came from local churches. In fact, many organizations these they tell their missionaries, "You cannot serve us yeah. unless you belong to a local mm -hmm. a, 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 a entity called church." Because that's where you get your prayer. That's where you get your, yeah. your, your, your emotional and psychological support. You know, so local churches and, uh, can partner in the place of training with missions organization. Mm -hmm. The place of raising support. The place of short term for, for example, many mission, mission organizations got mission fees already. Give mission, give local churches weekends. They can take a team of their leaders and visit the mission fee, raise their support, raise the team that need to take care of them. And go to the mission field and have the freedom to do ministry. When they come yeah. back, it will change their perspective. Local churches should invite missions executives and missionaries to come and share testimony. When they come to share testimony, they should raise tangible yeah. funds and support them. They should not look for the old clothes. A lot of us got good clothes in our homes. I, 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 I'm guilty. Sometimes you've not used it for two years, but it's still that you do not want to get rid of it because it's still looking fine. Get them off the rock and, and give them to the people who will use them now. One of my friends said, if you got something that you're not used for two years, you yeah. never need to give it out. Give it out. Yeah. And I remember that today, that I got a special cooker that been giving me a hard time. And then one of my daughters said she's buying me a, a one. She's going to go buy. She bought it already. They're giving it to somebody to bring it I said, I go, I went for somebody. Fix it and you a ticket. I bought it in China, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It can be occupying space and not doing work. So there are a lot of things we need to get rid of. And, and the local church, they don't think that the missionary are second-class citizens. Mm. They are God's generous. They are people who've left everything uh, to step out to the mission field. That's why Oswald Smith will say, the father of modern mission, he said, uh, uh, from Canada, he says, he if you cannot go, you should send an equivalent substitute. He also said, it's not right for one Cuba put a year the gospel Two times, and all yes. people, I say it wrong for Puerto Rico yeah, ten times when there are other people who have never heard it. So, uh, and, and for us to get that uh, uh, to be done, missions, organizations, and, and, and churches got to work together so that we deploy the manpower mm -hmm. in places that they are needed wow, to work. Thank you. Uh, and I was going to ask a question. I think you've already answered a portion, and you're already doing a portion. Of this: How can we create a more missions awareness all over Liberia? A more missions awareness all over Liberia. One thing I've been trying to do in recent time, one is every local church must first agree. If God will do anything in the nation, mm. he says his people are praying. 
So if every local church will take just five minutes, five minutes of your local church, and when you, you do it in the midst of praise and worship, before the preaching, five minutes, yeah. and you spend to pray for local missionaries. You spend, you take to pray for people who are taking the gospel in dangerous areas. People who have been stopped, even right here in Liberia. There is a place in Cape Mount, you cannot go there to preach, do anything in a bush mm. on Friday, you will be arrested. You, you will be arrested. So, 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 if we can just begin to take five minutes every Sunday. Yeah. And let the church together pray. God is yeah. going to plant a seed in the house of the people praying. Because, listen, when you pray for missions and pray for God to yeah. raise missionaries, don't be surprised. You That's why at times I'm like, Ugh. when I was praying, when I, when I was praying, I didn't know. Yeah, you will be answered the answer. God's prayer. So, <laughs> that's one. Yeah. And the second one is, every local church, whether you got mission fee or don't have mission fee, yes. you should have a missions offering. You can do it once a month, or you can do it once in three months. Raise that money, don't give it to pastor. Raise that money, don't give it to member, don't give it to sick member. Take it to a mission yeah. fee where you see somebody preaching the gospel. When you make that investment, okay. you are making investment for eternity. Okay. And the third thing to be involved in mission is every local church, at least twice a year, should have a, a missions fee trip for her church members. You can have one for the young people. You can have another one. Two days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they come back. Give them an exposure. We call it missions fee trip exposure. Mm -hmm. That exposure will help them to understand uh, the, the, uh, the nitty gritty of the mission fee and how they can get involved. Again, we all can be missionaries, but we all can pray. We all can go to the field, but we all can give. We all can support. We all can write letters. We can send texts to the missionary. As the missionary receives yes. the text, he, she gets yeah. in power yeah. to do better for the king. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Uh, the next question might still, but I'm going to just go ahead and ask. Uh, you talked about, about Cape Mount, but are there, are there other areas in Liberia that you think need missionaries? And how can the body of Christ uh, rise up to the challenge, not only to send missionaries, to say go, but intentionally support them so that they don't feel like they're abandoned on the field? Uh, like I was saying earlier, I said we need we need we need clearing houses or a clearing house <clears throat> that can receive all these mission related report and keep them there. You know, for example, the Campus Crusade for Christ is doing the Jesus film and translating uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Saint Luke Jesus film into the languages of the people. Literally, mm -hmm. and Bible society are helping with Bible translation, which all are awesome. But you see, if do we have a mission scoffers? Do we have a mission central bank that people can, can can make investment into? And do we have credible people that can say, yeah. yes, this money for mission will go to missionaries? You know, are, 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 are we not afraid to say, okay, I got missionary, but I'm not being able to support them. These are the challenges they're going through. Yes. Can people pray for him? Can we, can we highlight that? It's not just about me telling you, I got this missionary here, I got this fee here, and I, 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 and I. It's basically, where are they stationed? There are places in Cape Mount that need the gospel. There are places in Lower Lufa that need the gospel. There are places uh, 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 in, uh, in the region between uh, 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 Sino, uh, River Sears, Grand G there, River G, in, uh, uh, even down to the top of the top belt that need the gospel. Even the, 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 the Cocoya area. There are a lot of places. People call you the B, the D, I mean, uh, uh, the Mende, the, uh, 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 the, the Va. I said about the Loma people, they are there that need the gospel. But listen, we all can yeah. reach to every place to by ourselves. It has to be coordinated. Mm. Do we have a coordination? So my cry is, can we consider starting a school yeah. of missions for Liberian missionaries that will be owned by the churches? And we got five or six churches who agree to support that. So we have a periodic training. They come for three months training. We can house them at Camp Lawana or we can okay. house them at, at, at Camp Gethsemane. Where they, they, they ain't got to look for food, they ain't got to look for sleepy place. They stay there, they train, 
they learn, you know, you give them money to go to town to shopping, and they are transported to their fees, and they are mm. required to work out of and they come back for retraining. If we do that kind of training for the next two years, we are we not just have efficient missionary, we have missionary that have capacity there to do the work of ministry, and we have a church that is supporting the yeah. missionaries. No single church should boast because yeah. there are many of the big churches here, there are missionaries in the villages. I mm. have had to minister to them by the grace of God. And I'm not being able to do it much. Sometimes you get in and call you uh, 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 daddy. I say, no, I'm not your daddy, your daddy in town. I'm just a mentor. And I want to remind you, you got power. I'm not looking for a child to take uh, take charge over. But you see, uh, doing, the king, uh, doing the king's business, yeah. it needs haste. We got to pay attention to the details. And I think I think the church needs to refocus her vision, reassess what is it God called us to do as a nation. The church is so much on the buildings, which is good. So much on the titles, which is good. And supporting that when you get a title, nobody will respect you. And supporting that when you raise the issue of title business, you come in with a negative trend to the discussion. That's okay. Yes. But you see here, yeah, under this gospel of the kingdom is preached to the whole nation yeah. as a witness. The end is not going to come. Mm -hmm. You see how many titles you got. On that day, you say, mm -hmm. welcome and wait well on that good and faithful servant. You'll be faithful yeah. a few days. When I say, they call you Bishop Double. Or they call you Archbishop Double. Or they call you Apostle General Double. Or they call you Prophet that Double. All of them yeah. useless. They are nothing to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Unless the Lord builds the house, everything will do is for nothing. And people need to come to grasp with this fight that until the gospel is preached. So it means if the church is not preaching the gospel, the church is not supporting the gospel, the church is not yes. sending people out for the gospel, yes. it means the church is not doing the kingdom mandate. Yeah. Yeah. And if the church is not doing the kingdom mandate, mm. the church will be held accountable by God himself. Yeah. And how many prophecy you raised for me? And how much of your money went to missions? And today you were checked. Many of the churches who claim they are doing mission, if you begin to ask them, how much of your finances go to mission? Not even 10%. It's 0.1% 0, well, 0. Was... that go to mission. And when yeah. the data one, it won't make the loudest noise. So I would say small. at times the missions often becomes pastors um, for pastor to travel abroad. Becomes pastors. And that's, that's not missions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pastor vacation. Oh, the senior trying to sing, you buy things. You buy chairs. No, 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 not mission offering. You are misapplying yeah. the phone. Oh, my, I feel like jumping. Phone. Whoosh. That is gospel. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll just jump in and, and say, um, we are going to be doing a, a missions conference in Liberia. So, guys, uh, put your hat open. I think that's going to be important for uh, and I just want to add local church pastors. I'm a local church pastor uh, for a season. I believe it's a season. Uh, but we have a mandate and a responsibility. Don't forget that when God brings people under you, what you do, how you lead, how you redirect those people to the kingdom agenda matters. And we are going to be accountable to God for each person that God brings. So God's people are not for personal interest. They are not for... They are for his agenda. It's for us to disciple them. He said he called apostles, pastors, prophets, priests to do the work of, to equip the saints so that they can do the work of the ministry. So if we are not doing our role of equipping for them to do the work of the ministry, then we are missing right. out on God's mandate. We are missing out on our role. So we disqualify ourselves already for what God has called us to do. So please, right. uh, let's, let's rise up to task. Let's rise up to the assignment and to the call. Thank you so much, Pastor Double. And, and, so much yeah, and like you said, I mean, sometimes people think the church, the pastor, it belongs to them personally. And I, I, I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. The members that come to you yes. do not belong to you. They belong to Jesus. Yes. And, and, and if, you, if you come to realize that all the people that are coming to your church will not stay with you for the rest of your life, then you have a good yeah. appreciation of what life is. Yourself, the church you went to, mm -hmm. you didn't stay in that church. You move. Nobody beat you. Yeah. There were people who gave you the opportunity to preach. And because of that, you are a big man of God. You are a senior man of God, senior woman of God. I tell you this. Mm -hmm. Give God's children. You are all God's servants. It will be mind-blowing for you to say to your 
your father yes. son, give me money, let me go talk to our pastor so he can bless you. The people who call and brought to you, help them to see what the father wants to do. Help them to grasp what the father is directing them to. Uh, and help to support them because when you fulfill the father's agenda, you are going to be blessed Amen. and lifted because you are doing the work of the Lord. If you don't venture into that, mm. in the final end, you will be disappointed. Because eventually, the people will go. Do you remember Paul's statement? He said, I don't care whatever they are doing. Yes. One thing I know, Christ is being preached. He said, you want me for Apollos, be for Apollos. You want me for me, be for me. But the person who deserves the glory, the honor, and the mm. praise is the Lord God Almighty. He mm. gives the increase. He is the one who gives the increase. So listen to me. Every young man that comes to your church, every young woman that comes to your church, see that Amen. person as a seed Amen. that God has given you that you need to plant into the mission field. When you yes. develop that heart, you will not be a friend when you lose some of them. When they go to do better ministry than you, they will remember that you were the one yeah. who became the very person that provided means for ministry. I, I, I can say I, I preach over 100 messages now because there was one guy in Kakata called Reverend Dr. Gideon Banker who gave me the chance to preach the first message. And I can still remember I was trembling. Reverend Gideon Panga is now in uh, uh, Ghana, uh, uh, a lead of Bible College, pastor of the church, but yet he has mm -hmm. never met the people that he trained me for. Yeah. Yet it's as a result of what he did. I'm doing missions today because there was somebody called uh, 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 Lance Matthew, Edward George, a uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Ruben as a and a team of mm. people that invested their time and talent and treasure in me. They may never meet the people that they invested in me to reach yeah. out to, but guess what? Yeah. They made an investment Amen. in me. Mm. And God takes the glory and they share in the blessing because of what they did. Pastors, stop refusing to expose the potential of your young yes. people. Stop being afraid. Yeah. Oh, stop doing that. Because as you give Amen. them the opportunity, the Lord will open more channels for you. The Lord will provide more yeah. means for you to step out and do supernatural things. Listen, you might think this guy is the Amen. best guy, but the one God will bring will be better than the one you got. Amen. So invest. God gave his best, Jesus. And mm -hmm. now we have had little and smaller Jesuses, if you may, in quote, that are still declaring the counsel of God. Miracles are happening. Mm -hmm. Transformation are happening. Because God gave his best. Don't hold by your best. Don't hinder your best. Some of us only respect pastors from our churches. No, God is not coming for a Methodist church. Yeah. He's not coming for Baptist church. He's not coming for Pentecostal church. He's not coming for Harvest of Philadelphia. Oh no, he's not coming for Anglican or Kelly. He's coming for people who are watched by the blood of the Lamb. And our role is to take this unchanging mm. gospel to people who have not committed mm. their hearts to the Lord. So they turn their lives to the Lord. Yeah. And we do that, we'll be setting the peace. We save ourselves from stress. I've seen people who are mentors, who are disciples, pastoring bigger churches than I have ever pastored. Right now, I'm a pastor. I can't pastor a church. I do training. But guess what? When I go to those churches, the pastor referred to me as their spiritual father. I said, well, God is spiritual father. Maybe if I, uh, uh, Lance and Matthew or Eddie mm. George, because if they are not seeing me, he will not see me. You know? But I still remember on BDR, it was two elderly men, the Reverend John Horace, and the Reverend Avin Pitmore, who were our tutors before the brothers did. And we thank God. We Amen. are not pastoring their churches, mm -hmm. but we are still offspring of it's the kingdom. It's a kingdom. You're advancing the kingdom. It's Wow. It's thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So how can people connect to you? How can they support you? How can they pray for you? Well, you, uh, you have some of the basic things we have. You can pray for us uh, in terms of support. We have a messenger page called T. Augustine Double Page that you can connect with. Or, or the Church of Flame Broadcast page is also there. Or better still, you can call, you, you can connect us on our WhatsApp plus 231-777-01-3614. Plus 231-777-01-3614. Triple seven zero one 
3614 is our WhatsApp number. Or better say Augustine D E E at gmail.com. A U G U S T R N E D E E. We are also truly grateful uh, for the support and the work we have with our uh, uh, East, East West Missions Organization that has a primary responsibility of multiplying the disciples of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ in the spiritually dark places of the world. And they have been the people that have inspired us, especially on this uh, kingdom expansion and kingdom building work in missions. And thank you to our friend and brother, Brother Andy, who has been our contact person from East West Missions Organization Amen. in showing that the gospel Amen. Thank you so much. to the nations. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put all the Thank information you, on the description box below, so guys, you could just click on the link or check the number on there. So, any last words you want to say to our viewers this morning, afternoon, evening, whenever they are watching this? My final word uh, to God's church globally: it will not. It will take more mm -hmm. than one finger to pick a lies. It will take more than one church to do the work of missions globally. It will take a collective, a corporate venture. Everybody knowing their role and playing their role well in partnership and networking to ensure Amen. that the name of the King of Kings is raised high in every territory. Amen. We want the flag of Jesus to be raised. And for that to happen, uh, you are my brother, you are my sister. Amen. We join hands, side by side, to do the work of God. I will join yeah. face to face, help you do your work, and you can't help me do our Amen. work. In the final end, yeah. it is the work that brings God the glory. Yeah. So, beloved, Amen. can we pray for missionaries? Can we support them yeah. based on sometimes one time support? But sometimes when you give one time support, the Lord will bless you. You will want mm -hmm. to continually give that. I mean, maybe not to the, to the yeah. same source, but there are mm -hmm. different places and different facets of mystery that need help. Yeah. There are many missionaries that are there. They need the portable Jesus theme to go out and do a, a gospel ministry. Yes, you can pay for one of those in the U.S. or different parts and ship it to Liberia. And depending on which missions, organization, and a fee you wanted to, whether to mm -hmm. the Vah in Cape Bon or to the Loma in the Zosa area or, 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 or to the day people, uh, we can take it there and, and check on it and there are supports and testimony coming to know that Amen. even though you are not Amen. in the country, you are praying and you are giving. And finally, pastors, can you pray five minutes every Sunday? Five minutes every Sunday. During your praise and mm -hmm. worship, or at the end of your praise and worship, the church can be packed. And let people pray for missionaries. And pray that God will raise up liberals. See what God amen. will not raise some of the very people amen. that are praying the prayer. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. you so much, Pastor Dubbo. Thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, subscribe, share it with as many pastors as you know, as many believers as you know, as friends. Even if they are not believers, you never know what God can do in the life of someone when they watch this. So thank you so much, Pastor Dabba. God bless you. Have an incredible rest of your day. Thank you so much, Pastor Dabba. God bless you. Have an incredible rest of your day. Thank you and God bless you.